helps to synergize with Darius's ability to take down an entire team given that setup. Looks like Salisbury has chosen a simpler drone lane with a good bit of gold for AP damage and plenty of lockdown. In the mid lane from Salisbury University, we're looking at Velikaz, the tentacled scientist, hoping to analyze and kill anything in his sights. Looks like SU is setting up some work with that choice. should be the most interesting due to the contrast between champions. It looks like we'll be having to wait out the three minute delay while the game begins. I apologize for the quality of my microphone. I admit it is not the best. I'll do my best to keep other volumes low, however. I'll turn down the League of Legends volume so that we can keep that under control. So the game it should be in the loading screen now. I expect the game to be starting any second. Unfortunately, we will not be able to see it for another 2 minutes and 15 seconds. In the meantime, we can begin to predict how the game is going to go. In the Twitch chat, what do you all think? Who's going to win this game? Alright, glad to hear that the music is no longer a problem. Our right, chat, who do you think will win? Put in your votes for Salisbury University or McDaniel College. Let's see who's right and who's wrong. And whichever team comes out on chop, we know that we're going to have a good time. Thank you, Kerrigan, for indeed lighting this chat room up. I appreciate any input you have into the game. Looks like we have a vote for the Burry. We've got two votes for Salisbury. McDaniel seems to be falling behind in this chat. Perhaps that's because this stream is from the SU Club team, but I'm sure that's coincidence. Looking at the team compositions once again, look, we may have some early ganks coming in, especially on the immobile mid lane on Velkaz. He'll have to watch out for that. And on bot lane, we have equal peel on both sides. That should lead to some interesting fights. As I mentioned before, we'll be having different emphasis on dragon instead of before 6.9 where we had five different dragons we will now have four different types spawning randomly before the elder dragon appears each one giving a different buff there is one dragon that gives extra damage to objectives such as large monsters in the jungle or enemy structures we have a dragon which applies burn damage at e uh, 
I'm sorry, it's the fire dragon that applies upper damage from both AD and AP. We have one which increases movement speed. So we'll see what these teams prioritize. The game will beginning in 15 seconds. Let's see if any action has happened already. Hopefully we haven't missed much. Five seconds left on the delay timer. And here we go. The game will be starting and the stream will go down for a second while I switch over to the League of Legends screen. Let the games begin. Best of luck to both colleges. Now on the loading screen, um, either or both teams have died already, there we go. That means I don't have to continue making something up about a blank screen, always fortunate. So here we go. Looks like we are still waiting for some of the players to load in. But once they are, the games will begin and we'll be able to see what's going on. Alright, both teams are 100% now. Should be able to watch... the and play on the fields of justice. So far, it looks like we have three skins per team. No pre-game advantage there. Skins are all about the mind games. And we have equal masteries between the champions. This will make the game interesting. On top of equal levels, we have equal champion masteries. Alright, it looks like I haven't spectated the game before, so League of Legends has decided to give me some tips on that. Please let me know in chat if there are any more sound issues. I've done my best to balance it thus far. So right now we're on the SU team base. They're breaking out. Looks like a move will be starting with blue side. Let's see where McDaniel's heading. Sejuani appears to also be blue side. It doesn't look like we'll be having any uh, counter jungling from the start. No invades. Both teams are choosing the defensive beginning to the game. McDaniel College closely guarding their blue. SU team's bot lane guarding their bot side. As you can see, there are also jungle timers now spawn. as part of the new update. So we can take a look at what the different champions have started. Garen's gone for the defensive choice, choosing four, he four health pots and a cloth armor. Ladarius has gone for the regen with Thorin's shield. Both Amumu and Sejuani have chosen to go for the Hunter's Talisman, a good item Minions for champions fallen. that focus on mana and abilities, and perhaps a bit tankier. Once again, I think the most exciting lanes to watch <laughs> should be mid lane, <laughs> and perhaps bot lanes. Both teams have some very heavy engaged supports. Jungle camps will be spawning any second now. The games will begin. Here's the Gromp. Here we go. Mid lane is where the minions first spawn. So we'll see what happens. Talon versus Velikaz is particularly interesting. Velikaz has the hope to win at long range, but if Talon can get in range of Velikaz, he, he can slow him and appear next to him. Velikaz's ult has to try to bring up with Talon's ult. Darius and Garen fighting. It appears Darius is more focused on farm as Garen goes for some aggression. See so yeah, how the junglers are fair. Garen goes at his wolves and Sejuani appears to be taking a different path. We're going for sake of scuttle mission. In the mid lane, Velkaz and Talon are going fairly evenly. Both of them see, seem to be in good health. And in the bot lane, we have two farm lanes. Another champion 
other team up. Oh, it looks like Leona has lost some health. Caitlyn taking advantage of her range to poke down Leona. Leona still has a charge left. She'll be able to use that to heal. Okay, the top lane, Darian, Darius and Garen appear to be brawling once again. Not surprising for these two champs. Darius is getting pushed under tower. More difficult than Garen to farm. Returning once again to the jungle, we have Mulu going to the red one. While Sage 1 appears to still have not gone to the blue and is instead going to the rafters. She's very heavily warded up the bot side of the river, but one of those wards is gone. Right now, it appears that McDonald College is winning in terms of vision. Let's see how that goes out in terms of the rest of the game. Also had his first back, it appears I missed that, and bought a Hunter's Potion and a Rejuvenation Axe. Uh, speaking as the movie main, that will give him some longevity in the jungle, and not have to back in attempts. Bot lane once again, take a look at the farm down. We have 24 with Caitlyn and 26 with Lucian. Both teams keeping it very close. This lane progresses. Doesn't look like other teams particularly interested in engaging at this time. Like in the mid lane, we have a ward in the bot side. Sichuani still towards the top. Mumu has scouted out mid, but does not appear to have ganked. Right now, Talon is putting some damage on the Belkot. So watch out for that front assassination. Especially, but Talon's Ignite is down, so at least that will not be in the Darius's flash has been burned, as is Garen's. I missed that. And Belkaz's flash is down. I apologize for missing that exception. The best keeping on every lane. Garen and Darius at it again. Darius remain. I'm sorry. Garen remains pushed under tower. And Darius stands at the back, ready to take on a Mumu or a Belkaz appears to have poked down Talon's son. That man remains a close fight. Says Juani's coming around. It looks like she may be ganking mid or is going for the cast. Talon has taken first blood. Says Juani came around to help but was not needed. First blood goes to McDaniel College. Talon versus Belkaz. Talon with the early advantage. Switch over to manual camera and see if that works for us. Spotlight without the kills and the Earth Dragon has spawned. This symbol shows which one is ready. As a reminder, that will give extra damage to enemy structures such as turrets and to major monsters in the jungle such as Dragon or Rift Herald. And the Rift Herald is interesting. I was part of the match. Heal. Caitlyn, okay, both her summoner spells are down, as Sejuani eyeballs the bot lane herself. Messi appears to have come out ahead from that, burning only Leona's exhaust. Velkaz looks like he's running bot lane to see what he can do, see if he can provide a little assistance. And he's returning mid, it looks like the team decided against that, and just keep farming up. Looking at the farm in the mid lane, we have Velkaz at 28 farm, and Talon at 30. Though Talon is a kill ahead, Velkaz refuses to fall behind in farm. Bot lane, the gap is increasing, Lucian at 56 farm, Caitlyn at 46. Top lane also has a gap, this time with McDaniel in the lead. Darius with 46 farm, and Garen with 32. Garen appears to be taking quite the damage from Darius. It appears he's having some trouble up there. Darius keeping him under tower, under experienced, and out of farm. He returns to the jungle. It appears he is not yet backed from buying the Hunter's Potion and Rejuvenation Bead. Once again, that will give him massive amounts of endurance in the jungle. Sejuani has opted not to go the Rejuvenation Bead route and instead has finished off her Stalker's Blade. And the Hunter's Potion, of course. We have
have a kill bot lane. It looks like an engage has happened. Let's see where this goes. Lucian has used his ult. And the follow up from the Yona. He has gotten the kill. That is a double kill from bot lane. Both the support and the ADC have a kill and the assist. That will give the uh, Salisbury University team quite the advantage. Belkaz has a flash and escape from the fight of the town and appears to be going for the kill. Can Belkaz turn the tables and the ult has worn off? Unfortunately, unfortunately for Belkaz, not only was he unable to get the kill, but Sejuani came in and cleaned up. Talon extends his league once again as the fight remained close. Belkaz is not out of the game yet. He has shown that he has potential to turn this lane around. Top lane, Darius and Garen are both in full health. Garen has gone a very defensive route, choosing to go for a ruby crystal and a chain quest. Darius has gone more aggressive, choosing to go for the page, most likely leading to the black cleaver. Darius once again pushing Garen under tower. Garen will be forced to farm under tower and perhaps break his guard up and fall as Darius continues to rise. Only second most farm in the field, only behind Salisbury University team's Lucian. After their kill bottling, they get backed and appears to be going for an S3 reverse. The F sword and a claw field for him. Appears they're going for another engage with Yona with the Q and it's ult. Lucian gets another kill on Caitlyn. Will they get it on Nautilus? Nautilus being tank that he is, has survived for quite a long time, but unfortunately for him, it looks like he's falling to Lucian. Who gets the double kill? Belkaz having some trouble mid lane. Talon using his ignite, and the bleed has once again slain Belkaz. Belkaz appears to be having more trouble now as Talon scoots ahead with the BF sword and double longsword. For assistance from Talon, Abumu looks to be trying to save the tower. You save the tower, but both Talon and Sejuani has, have gotten away. Sejuani heading towards the top side of the river. Lucian getting top, just attacking Garen on the tower. Bill Garen's under tower seems to be fighting off Darius as his health is down to approximately the same level as Garen. Sejuani is on the top lane in favor of continuing to make some gold from the jungle. And SU is going for the Earth Dragon. Looks like they're just sitting up to the Earth Dragon. I'm not, unfortunately, I'm not really familiar with the symbols. I believe that means the next dragon will be Water Dragon. Uh, if anyone in Twitch chat can correct me on that, please do. Let's take a look at the boom between the two teams. You can see that red side has warded up top lane and has a single ward bot. Lands are protected. Talon appears to be feeling confident, not avoiding top or bottom front. And then after for being confident, we'll see if they t SU decides to take advantage of that lack of vision. Looking at the fog of war from blue team's side, Mumu now can see that uh, Sejuani has taken the Scuddler and has a vision right there. And a fight breaks out in top and the top Garen has flashed out of the fight, Abumu has flashed out of the fight, and bandaged back in. He's benefited him, unfortunately Darius has got the kill. Look Garen to see how the Salisbury University team copes with this. Returning to vision of the entire map. It appears that now Salisbury University is winning in terms of rewards. They're going to have a tough time. Daniel College takes this top tower. There is push cards, and it looks like they're going to get that tower. Garen's going to scare them off. Himself, they're going against the CC machine, like said. Sejuani, and Darius going for the kill. They're going for the kill. Darius takes out Sejuani in return for his own life. Darius looks like he'll finish off the tower, but Garen did manage to get a kill out of this. We'll see what he does with the goal turning to bot lane. See that they are pushing up against the enemy tower, perhaps the real way. And Amumu has saved the top tower, perhaps he's victorious. There's the Amumu alt curse of the sad mummy. 
got the tears going. He's got the AOE. Will he take down Darius? Darius' movement speed builds up, and he heals with the Q. He'll be going in for another bandage, continuing the AOE, and he backs off. Darius survives once again. Talon roaming away from mid lane. Looks like Salisbury University's bot lane's going to have uh, have to watch out. Talon is going for blood. This man is ready. Will he get the kill? Leona ready with the E. Fusion throws down the damage. It's a flash from Talon. And will he make it with his ult? He has survived. That is a heal and a flash from SU's Johnny Dubs. That can be out. Healing for him. Lots of Lucian ult being thrown down. As says Wani, also going for the bot lane. We have now seen the double flash from Salisbury University's bot lane. Looking at summer spells here, both Talon and Nautilus have burned their flash in that gate. Well, both Lucian and Leona have burned both their summoner spells. The top lane's turret remains standing as you manage to defend that against the onslaught of Darius and Sejuani. No turrets have fallen yet this game. Both teams are even kills. We have five kills to five kills. Once again, look at the farm count. Darius has gone way ahead. 95 farm coming at Darius at guaranteed 54 farm. It's hard to keep up when he's spinning to win. Garen appears to be going for. I can't think of what item that would be. My first is Sunfire, but if I recall correctly, Sunfire is now Bammy Cinder. Darius pulling up Garen, building both health and armor, while once again, Garen. Their two names to me, for some reason, are very similar. I apologize for the tongue twists there. Darius checking out the river and has gone for the early black lever, as I stated before. Looking at the kill distribution, Garen comes in at one kill, one death. Keeping it even there. One death, no kills, no assists, but has managed to defend turret. I wish to give him credit for that. Salisbury University's Velkaz having some trouble in lane. Three deaths, no assists, and no kills. Talon starting to slide ahead and farm. There's only so much he can do when Talon is this far ahead. Lucian seems to be the bot lane is what's carrying his SU team at the moment. We have Lucian at three kills, and Leona at one kill and three assists. Going over to the McDaniel College side, we have Darius coming in at two kills, just behind Johnny Dubs. Sejuani with one kill and two assists and one death. Caitlyn with two deaths, and Nautilus with two deaths. It appears the mid lane is being ruled by Talons, McDaniel's Talon, and the bot lane ruled by Salisbury University's Lucian and Leona combo. And we'll see how this game progresses and what the team does, what each team does with each of their advantages. A move in the mid lane. Velkaz, two ults have been thrown down in the mid lane. Mumu has taken out Talon. Talon has died his first death. Will Mumu pay with his life? Says one. Says one. He risking power. I go and say some damage on a Mumu, but has backed off. That's a death for a death, and unfortunately for SU, the Darius one is coming ahead in the top lane. Terry still stands, but we'll see how long that lasts. And the blue turret. The blue side turret has fallen. We have a first turret in the game taken by Bear Conqueror on the side of the Daniel College. Darius continues to plow his way through the top lane. And it appears that he has chosen to back off now as Garen makes his way back up to the top lane. Darius is backing as Talon comes in for a gank on the bot lane. The SU's bot lane remains ready for the gank and is able to escape without taking any damage from Talon. Bell has been given some free farm and it looks like he has taken advantage of Talon works his way back mid as Velkaz continues to farm. Hopefully for his sake will be able to get out and he was able to play defensive. Talon did not go for a kill. Says one he eyeballing the mid lane. Let's see if any action occurs. Talon's pushing the lane towards Velkaz. Interesting choice if Sejuani is looking to gank. Uh oh, Velkaz is moving out and the lane is frozen in the middle. Let's see what happens here. Sejuani has revealed herself and Velkaz backed off. 
Sejuani has decided to opt out of the dive and is moving towards top lane. As she circles around the river, perhaps she might be making a call on the Rift Herald. Oh, she's going for behind Garen. How will Garen get out of this? Will Garen get out of this? They are doing a pincer move there. Lockdown on Garen and a flash. Garen has flashed using that dead man's and his Q speed to run away. And we have missed another kill from Johnny Dubs. Mumu has ganked the bot lane. Gonna get another kill for Lucian. Dragon appears to have spawned and they will be going for this dragon. Will either team go for the Rift Herald Cross or will they simply wait for the ban? Salisbury University has secured yet another dragon. Let's see what they do with this. And McDaniel College going for the Rift Herald. Waiting until there is only a minute and 20 seconds left. Oh, they have backed off. Are they going for another one? They have chosen to go their separate ways as Darius makes his way to the top lane and says one farm Raptors. Garen and Darius have encountered in the river and both have chosen not to fight. Looking at build pass, we have Darius with the Black Cleaver, Mercury's Treads, Giant's Belt. And Velkos falls once again to the double threat of Sejuani and Town. The Mobile Mage is going to have trouble against such ability and lockdown. Darius and Green. Salisbury University jungle and a second turret has fallen this time to town again. Salisbury University down to turrets. That's an Abubu all thrown down and Abubu is down. Is this will be a double kill for the Darius. No, but McDaniel College has indeed gotten two kills on the Salisbury University team. McDaniel College appears to be falling ahead with ten kills to Salisbury University seven and thirty. 2k gold to Salisbury University's 27.5. Looks like they're a little bit late on the Rift Herald and choosing not to go for an immediate Baron. Daniel's bot lane pushing to Salisbury University's turret. Will Salisbury University push back or freeze the lane? Appears they're not going for a kill at the moment, but instead choosing to hold the lane. We now have Velkaz heading to the bot lane as Daniel goes for yet another turret in the top of them. Garen teleports the top and they back off. Daniel appearing to go for the very safe choices, hoping not to lose their lead. Talon maintains the lead at the mid as Amumu and Velkaz close in on it. Another one appears to be ready to engage the Talon at the moment. We'll see when the next fight happens. Both of those are going to be ready to the next battle. They're going to be past skirmishes. Looking at each player again, we have Darren at 1 and 3 and 92 farm against Darius going at 4. Oh, and one. Darius definitely pulling ahead in farm and kills at 130 farm. Amumu at one kill, two deaths, and one assist. Compared to Sejuani's two kills, one death, and four assists. Sejuani appears to have the advantage in gold there. And has proven to have some major synergy with McDaniel's talent. In the mid lane, we have Velkaz at two kills, five deaths, and one assist. He is going for the Zanya's Hourglass defensive choice. Be prepared to deal with anything technical. Hopefully, that will help with survive talent. That's too many. She needs to throw down the poke. SU looks to be pushing the mid lane as McDaniel closes in, so he scares them off. Darius comes into the mid lane. Let's see what he decides to do. He waits in the bush to look for an opening. SU continues to push to the bot side, and we'll see what they do with that. Kaylin is in the killing range if SU decides to go for it, or it would be risky as they are hiding under turret. Continuing on with the player analysis, we have Kaylin at zero kills, two deaths, and zero assists. She is also falling behind Johnny Dubs' solution, who has 199 farm. And a large skirmish has broken out by the Reaches them under turret. Johnny Dove's ult is out, but he is low. He cannot take another fight. If he engages, he's a huge risk to his own life. 
Jimmy College backs off all five of them in the bot lane now. Hovering around that fly bush, Darius appears to be leaving the bot lane, perhaps going from Velkaz. We still have four members of McDaniel College in the bot lane. Top side, we have Garen pushing, seeing if he can get a turret while McDaniel's occupied. This one, he's also left the bot lane, and Talon is backing, leaving the bot lane back to the bot laners. Garen has pushed the turret, but is now backing off. Ward in the top lane. There's a fish board, which he has chosen not to take down. Seeing the risks to himself at placing himself in enemy vision. Darius comes top and Garen leaves, perhaps foreseeing that Darius will be on his way. This is one he roams to the bottom side of the jungle. Minimize his lead, hoping to minimize Talon's lead. Mumu and Sejuani both hovering around the bot lane, both looking to make plays. Sejuani goes for the defensive choice, sticking with her team, while Mumu and Leona have chosen to go through the jungle. Let's see what they have in mind. Leona returns to bot lane, while Mumu wanders in the jungle. He's going to attack the mid turret against this talent. This talent does not come up. Continues to apply map pressure at every point in the game as he and Darius decide to place their stakes in the Salisbury University jungle. Dragon will be coming up soon. This time will be a fire dragon. Let's see which team gets that. Will SU continue their dragon dominance or McDan will begin to make their way into the dragons? Appeared with McDaniel having a clear position on the in for the fire dragon. And McDaniel walks away without losing anything. Salisbury University's Velkaz had died once again, getting grabbed by the Darius through the wall. We have quite the exciting game here. McDaniel maintains a lead, but it is by no means over. Salisbury University we could see that happen. They're only behind by two turrets and still have plenty of position. And now they have ready to CC the team and provide damage as necessary. SU fanning out along the bot side jungle with Darius teleporting top to prevent that from taking the turret. Now SU has a 5v4 mid bot side area. Will they take advantage of it or continue to play defensively in turtle? McDaniel Black backs off, also playing defensively. And Talon is gone in. Velkaz taking advantage of his early Zanya's Hourglass to go into stasis to prevent a burst from Talon from killing him. Lucian extends his farm to the bot Sejuani begins to place her warding stake in the Salisbury side of the jungle. Has been seen by the warders who were spread of that for an extra ward. But does not work. Sejuani stays in the jungle, not afraid of Salisbury University. This is a very brave, appears to be a rhino rider. Back off! Daniel dominating the mid lane at the time with their Darius and Talon double team. Darius is back to all to the river, preparing to back, and he's going for the dunk animation. Darius gets the dunk as he backs. Personally, I enjoy that animation quite a bit and the skin, but however, it is very expensive. Both teams are very defensively now as they regroup and work out a strategy for the next section of the game. Side of the Darius coming around mid, helping Caitlyn take the bot side scuttler. Lucian and Leona are sticking together like glue, going to farm that bot lane some more. Lucian will not give up that farm lead. Mm -hmm. 
Darius going for a big play in the mid lane. Mumu has scared him off from Velkaz. Five regular awards, one of those being the Scuttle and a pink award. Daniel comes in terms of vision at the moment. Daniel eyeing that bot lane. They go in on the Salisbury University. Both teams have chosen to back off. While SU currently has the numbers, will they take advantage of the Both teams lying in wait. He will not have his lane getting pushed. He goes to the bottom of the Talon's going in. Will he die pushing under turret? No, he is backed off. The SU team taking down some of McDaniel's vision coverage. Once again, everyone retreats to their lane, scaring the farther. Backing continues to farm. Again to Talon. Looks like McDaniel has set their seat. Will they get her? Garrett will look at them all. Next time, both does not look like that. It's falling. They have set their seat. They have blocked on a day of taking that top of the turret. Now McDaniel will lose the turret. His advantage continues to go. Salisbury University closer to the bottom side of the jungle. It looks like they will be a dragon. This will be another water dragon. Ready to make a play for SU. Make it to him. He's following up and down in. Blood. And they have gotten it. They have gotten their blood. And the kill from Sejuani. They now retreat safely off into the sunset. Kip takes the Raptors. Retaliation to Garen. And he takes the Raptors. Looks like McDaniel has their sights set in this mid turret. Will they lock on like they did with that top turret? Can they dominate this turret? one and Darius quite tanky. Both of them are very different. Their in there. 
this is now McDaniel's junk. Gary and the let's make something happen on the bot side. What they do, it appears what they will do is back off. I cannot blame them for that. Neither of them is the greatest amount of damage on the team. Talent once again back mid lane. Let's see what he's going to do. Stop it. We have Leona Lucian and Garen from Midland to stop Talon from the push. Now let's provide the backup and Darius stays top. Keep the pressure on the top of the Looking at bot side, it looks like Salisbury side will be pushing ever so slightly to make Daniel's turret. We'll see what happens. Midland will be fairly close. Barons that could make or break this game. Take the red give this all the time. So if that one, McDaniel takes it, they could close out this game. Looking now at the builds for each team, we have Darius having Black Cleaver, Dead Man's, and Spirits Visage. That is not going to be fun for the Salisbury University team. <laughs> Dead Man's will give him all the chase down he could need in Spirit Visage. That healing. Not be fun for some reason. Some people have the Black Cleaver Dead Man's. Unfortunately, he does not have the amount of gold to have the third item that Darius does. Amumu has opted for Silver Hulk and Frozen Heart, choosing mana and armor over health. Not a bad choice considering the AD head McDead team. Looking at Talon, Caitlyn, and Darius. Both Talon and Darius being major threats right now, armor is not a bad choice. Vilkaz also has a Unfortunately, he has not finished the second item, but he has multiple components, and I'll be expecting to see that coming soon. Darius put on pressure on that top lane, almost standing in. as well. Darius has a item. We have a Ravenous Titan, a Dustblade of Drakthar, and a Yomu's Ghost Blade. That's going to give him some major burst and he's going to get there. They are going to be ready. Just my mic was quite a bit closer, and let's see if that helps. Looking at the field, I believe now is the time for an Elder Dragon. I am correct, as this is the Elder Dragon will be spawning very soon. Ten seconds, as a matter of fact. Daniel is going for the Elder Dragon. Salisbury also has their sights on him. Will they be able to take it from McDaniel College? This could be the buff they need. The dragon began with McDaniel no doubt dominating the dragon's pit. The best thing Salisbury can hope for is to steal the dragon from them. At what cost will they be able to get out? How many lives will it take? Let's see what happens. 
Lucian has thrown down his ult to damage the dragon, unfortunately for him, and did not take it. He didn't take any lives. Talon is out for blood and has gotten a kill on Lucian. The really loose stall is main source again. Ball cast throws out the ult. The true damage did some major hurt to McDaniel, but no deaths yet. Darren falls to Darius. There's another kill from McDaniel. There's a Leon all. We have a, we have a kill from Salisbury. Mumu has got it. There is two kills for Salisbury. Mumu has the double kill. Can they finish this off? Will Salisbury manage to pull this fight out? And no. Darius has gotten the quadra kill. And McDaniel has gotten the ace and the elder dragon. This could be a game. This could be the end of the game for McDaniel. What will they do with this lead? And Darius appears to be backing. Sejuani explores the jungle as Talon pushes down mid. McDaniel has chosen not to end, instead to go for a continued safe approach. This seems to be the pattern of McDaniel's play, and it is working for them. They are now 11 kills ahead and over 10k goal ahead. McDaniel has a major lead at this point. It is going to be very difficult for Salisbury to turn this around if it is even possible. Lucian scares off Talon and forbids the inhib. He says, no, you are not having this inhib right now. McDaniel has major pressure applied to the top and bot lanes. And Mumu appears to be going for the ZZ rock portal. Yes, he has gotten it in order to prevent some of that lane pressure that McDaniel applies so heavily. Caitlyn has gone for the giant slayer ready to take on those tanks that SU does have. And Talon has gone for Lord Dominic's regards. This will give him also the Giant Slayer passive and 45 bonus armor. This man is ready to burst down anything in his path. Now Darius and Garen hovering by Baron. Are they going for Baron or merely by the river? Darius once again enters what is now McDaniel's jungle. And we have two members of the SU mid, not letting them get an open in hit. Mumu and Darius fight it out, but Darius backs off. He is not going to get himself caught out. Assistance is asked for in the mid lane. McDaniel closing in on that inhibitor, but Wallace pushes out the bot lane. McDaniel does not let up for a moment in any lane. They continue to apply that map pressure. They do not let Salisbury University get ahead at any point. When they have that lead, they are locking down. Darius applies that top pressure wall. Caitlyn and Nautilus close in on the bot lane turret. SU will have to make a choice here. Which one do they defend? Do they take care of the open inhibitor? Do they stop the bot lane push or do they stop Darius? Right now with McDaniel's lead, they are going to have one. Appears that McDaniel has chosen to mid and go for that inhibitor. Will they make it? We have a five man mid, they are chosen to cross that way. Follow and go, and we have Zanya's Hourglass coming in yet again for Velkaz. Darius out for blood on the Talon, and Talon gets away. Zizwani coming in and escapes yet again. McDaniel walks away, but Lucian has managed to kill the Darius. Salisbury loses the bot turret, as I previously mentioned. Salisbury had to make a choice, and I think they made a good one. They defended the unit, they have two of them, they have two of them, and they have two of them, and they have two of them. They have taken down Nautilus, they have taken down the tank. There was two kills in SU's favor, little by little chipping away at that kill difference. Daniel continues to never forget the vision as they take down Scuttler and get some extra gold for their team. Darius is back with the Baron finally an opportunity to grab some safe farm. Salisbury needs this. They have been lacking anything safe for quite some time in this game. They're going for a big push down mid. Will they get out of this? McDaniel still has Nautilus and Darius down. If they are to get this turret, this is the opportune time. Can Salisbury get their first turret? Talon going in, and one following up. Will they survive? Talon has gotten yet another kill on Velikaz. He does not let Velikaz go. This man has a taste for squid, especially the kind that likes to kill and is perfect. That is a Caitlyn ult. And disrupted. 
So we have three members of Salisbury walking away. Leona, Lucian, and Amumu. Will it survive? Any more important? Will that inhibitor survive? Leona has gone down. Karen coming in through the wall. And McDaniel goes for the inhibitor. They're going to get this, no problem. Salisbury has put up a fight, and McDaniel has out-sustained them. We're seeing another ZZ rot. Hopefully that'll keep, hopefully for Salisbury, that'll keep that wave pushing too hard. And McDaniel goes for the second in him. Can Salisbury fight this? Can they stop it? No. McDaniel has gotten yet another in him, and this one has cost them nothing. Mumu goes for the bandage, but got Banshees veiled. Words of Kerrigan, it does feel bad. McDaniel, after taking two inhibs, continues to work together while Darius and Talon have returned to the base and are making their way back into the field. Darius appears to be going to the top lane where he does not like that Salisbury wave pushing his way. He says, no, this is my lane. Then wandering around in the Salisbury side jungle, or what was formerly known as the Salisbury side jungle. And Salisbury continues to cope with the super minion waves coming their way. McDaniels decides to back off and to look for another opportunity. Daniel has been playing very safe this game, and it has been working for them. They make the big plays, but most of the time, they are backing and they are pushing out the lanes without any opposition. They look to make the safest choices that will get them the most. And they are going for Baron. Kaylee begins attacking Baron. SU appears to be coming up ready to compete for him. This is going to be a risky move for Salisbury, regardless of what happens. And Daniel chooses the safe option and backs away from Baron. Will SU decide to fight it and allow the super minions to push toward their base? And we have kill on talent. We have the major source of damage. Also got the kill on the low power. This poor man does not catch a break. Right now we have a great team fight going on. This is anyone's fight right now. Darius having cool stacks. Can he get the kill? That's great from Sajwani. He's made your life still. Sajwani is out of the fight. She's not dead, but she's gone. Sajwani is now out. Lucian has gotten the kill. Darius. Darren and Darius going at it. Darius has come out ahead. We have 2v2 left. How will Salisbury make of this? And the ZZ Rod is thrown down the mid lane. Darius is down. It is on to the support. Salisbury has won this team fight. Salisbury has won the team fight. Being down eight kills now. That was a great fight on everyone's part. Salisbury has managed to pull it ahead, but if they do not get back to base quick, those two opinions are going to do work. Salisbury has taken their first tower. Their pride needed that. I think that was a good addition to this team. Be able to get that first tower. No matter what happens, they can say, you got a tower. Both teams coming back up with SU having more. What will these teams choose to do right now? McDaniel may think twice about going for Baron. They go for the safe option, and Baron has proven to no longer be a safe choice. Town gets those super waves, gets those super waves pushing, and takes out ZZ Rot Portal. Salisbury hovering in base, trying to decide their next plan of action. Salisbury making their way through the jungle. It looks like Lucian's going for red buff. Any help it get is good. Going red buff, that burn damage and slow could make the difference for the next team. But it could let them win another and turn this game in their favor. McDaniel hovering mid lane. Salisbury considers an engage. Both teams eyeballing each other, trying to decide where the other team is. Is it worth it to fight? This is the question they're asking themselves right now. Both teams competing for dominance at the bottom side of the jungle. Leona holding off the waves of super minions and Lucian coming in to stop them. Town and Darius pushing through the top lane. Will they be able to take another turret? Yet again, Salisbury's going to have to make a choice. Can they stop the never-ending push of Talon and Darius? Or instead, they choose 
defend against the supers, and the major McDaniel from mid lane. Talon is now top lane and Darius mid. Mid. We cannot underestimate this talent. He's shown us that many times throughout the game. Talon is now from mid lane. This is where the fight is happening. If, if a fight breaks out, we this point we turn the game. Dead wins. That is Salisbury's loss. And an inhibitor is back up. Salisbury now has one more item standing between them and the Nexus. And that other there it is, the other inhibitor is up. It's going to go ahead and it's safe in time for That is Leona's flash down and the team fight breaks out. Leona's is down for Salisbury team to fight it. It's in the defensive but now they've been going down to them with Denim with the raw tankiness of said money. Nautilus and Darius keeps that poke from affecting them. And he's shaking off and again, he double hit again. Oh, the Salt Ray Duke says that is a Belkaz ult down. Damn it. Oh, the Denim dies. Down and Haven staying in the back of the play. That is one member of Salt Ray's team down. Town is down. That is three kills for McDaniel, one kill for Salisbury. It does not look like they're coming ahead of this team play, and this may be a game where you're down to open illusion. Can he pull it off? Can he manage to stave off McDaniel on his own? It does not look like it. I think this is a good game. McDaniel has come out ahead. Great game to all players. Thank you for watching.